From the mind of Fallen came SK Gaming's revolutionary tactical prowess. By the strength of Cold Zero, they were propelled to the first ever major championship for a non-European team. We just have to play our game, play as a team, great kills and win clutch rounds. That's pretty much all we need to do to beat them. Now, the pride of Brazil must defend their throne as the best team in the world if they are to establish a dynasty that will be remembered forever. They glided through the group stage and now SK have an opportunity to do the same in the quarterfinals. Standing in their path is Flipside and they have thrown a curveball into the mix here in Cologne, bringing Nuke. New addition to the map pool and now new addition to the quarterfinals. We haven't seen it before and Flipside are going to be the first to pull it out of the bag, pull it out of their sleeve. The question is, is it going to be enough to create the up upset? I think there's no doubt that the desk has decided it will be an upset if Flipside were to pick up a, a map win here. I'll, I'll open up this, this kind of forum of discussion regarding would, can Flipside do it? Are they capable of it? We know that we've discussed that they have some strengths. They are a poor man's navi and all of these various kind of criticisms of Flipside. But how much does that map have an influence? Or is it safe to say that even, even now, even though they could have put as much homework as they could have into this map, we still can't help but lean towards SK Duncan? Okay, here's, here's the way that it could help, okay? Sure. No one has mastered Nuke. No. So maybe you can come up with something that's successful and the opponent won't have an automatic counter to it. They won't automatically adapt to it. Problem is, it's unlikely you're going to get 16 rounds worth of something totally unique that no one else has thought of and you're against one of the best tactical teams. Mm. On the other hand though, the reason why I don't really like it as a pick is usually with a pocket pick, with like a surprise pick, you at least want yourself to have some comfort on it or some surprise aspect to it. I'm actually not convinced that Flipside has that. Like I think they're just trying to do an absolute joker and they're trying to just make this as random as possible yeah. and just hope that you know, the SK gaming guys are a bit discombobulated, they don't know what's going on, things collapse. I think you're hoping for a bit too much, both from your side and theirs. So I think ultimately, the idea I understand, but sure. I think the execution is going to be a lot more difficult than you might imagine. See, for me as well, like if this wasn't Flipside, for example, let's put another team in that position to pull out the new card. Let's say back in, I guess it was like 2014 when it was still in like a almost decent rotation. If it was like your NIP back then, your Virtus Pros, your original Dignitas team, your Copenhagen Wolves, I'd be quite excited to see has anything transferred through. They you know, used to be very, very good at it, but. This team was never a huge new team, even in the early days of CSGO. Prior to that, you could probably find some references, but even then, it wasn't a big pull to me. So I'm just not seeing how they feel they're going to fit into this yeah. one as a victor here. And just very quickly, you were saying something to me in the green room about how you think Nuke has shifted between uh, you know, the previous iteration and currently. Do you want to kind of quickly shed some light on that one? Well, for me, it's more a question towards these two more than anything. It's the fact that, for me, I feel that t side's becoming more dangerous, obviously, with the viability of the pistols coming through the Tech-9 being a new addition coming out into this iteration more than the prior one. So surely it's just the fragile economy of the CT side becomes even more deadly to a factor that no one's yet to fully exploit, that maybe that could be one of those sides that a team could come into on the T and maybe push a little bit more of excitement towards this map. What are you thinking, Yanke? I feel that it has the structure to a map, but it allows also the CTs without too many grenades to, to go for setups which can be really beneficial for them because the, the most of the time you use the nades is to stop an upper rush and you don't really need a, too many nades for that. So once you have the most basic ones, you have a lot of aim, ju aim jewels you can take on the, in the yard area and also with good rotations, it basically comes down to uh, setting up good crossfires more than anything else. So this is mainly why it is such a city-sided map. And still, to this day, despite being reintroduced, we haven't seen any kind of changes, any shifts. Maybe the odd, the odd strong T side, we saw one in the qualifier. We'll be talking more about that and our predictions in just a moment. But first, we have an opportunity to see one of these many fans here in the Lanxess Arena. He's hanging out with Mitch to talk about his, his thoughts ahead of this one. Well, Alex, I have many thoughts, but to maybe help me on that train, I do have a couple of guys from the audience here we've managed to run into and chat to earlier on. Jonathan, we had a little bit of a word earlier on, mate. So why don't you tell us where you're from and who you're supporting this weekend? Uh, I'm from Belgium, and uh, first time here. Nice, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> uh, I gotta say, it's amazing. First time here, and I'm already blown away. Fantastic. I mean, the atmosphere in here, it's just getting started as well. We were talking about that before. Come Sunday, this place will be packed to capacity. But who are you, who are you supporting here? What team are you really hoping that gets this major championship? Uh, I'm supporting Virtus Pro. Virtus Pro? 
I think uh, you're not alone in that at all, to be honest. I think there's plenty of fans that are starting to crowd through for Virtus Pro. And I've got Andre here as well. Now, interestingly enough, you're doing a bit of a throwback here with the Titan shirt. Uh, are you supporting a French team here specifically? Yes, I support NDS, but they are still not in the major. So, yeah, I'm now for Flipside today. Ah, Flipside Tactics has a few fans I've seen. And what do you think of this game so far? It's been a bit of a tough one for Flipside from what we've seen. Yeah, it's very, very difficult for, for Flipside, but I hope they play Nuke well and we see then a third map. Yeah, Nuke will be very interesting. One map I was hoping to see, a team just throw a spanner in the works and see if they can get a win away. Let's talk a little bit about that uh, Virtus Pro versus Astralis game. Uh, who was your MVP for VP? Uh, Pasha Bicep. You gotta, you gotta admit, Pasha Bicep was amazing with the orb, but also was Taz, Snacks. But you give credit to our Astralis, they had one guy less, and still they gave a fight. Absolutely, I mean, Zonic was a beast, especially with pistols as well, that old 1.6 mastery coming back into effect. So if you're backing Flipside here, who do you really want to see, I guess, improve over this next map? Any particular player? Yeah, I want to see Makalov. Yeah. yeah, he's a very good player and he's good performance today, so I hope I will see him again then. Yeah. I think we all want to see Markloff perform here as well. So many people are hoping to see the Markloff of old, him get back to his dominance that we used to see in the old days, but maybe we will. We're going to have to check in with the desk, though, and see what they think. Alex, take it away. Look at that. Thanks very much, Mitch. Uh, these guys are going to be out for your jobs in a minute. Tyson shirt as well. But calling upon yesteryear, we have, of course, lost them, and we actually lost the G2 roster as well earlier on. Now, though, it's time for predictions. You guys know exactly where this is going. However, we do need to justify it with, with a little bit of explanation. Well, I assume we lean towards the Brazilians, right, Duncan? We're working our way down the line. Yeah. It's hard to see past them. Obviously, not on any kind of past record on the map or any specific playing style, but just the quality of the team. Yeah. I mean, very great fundamentals in terms of the game. So a lot more skill, I think, over on their side of things. I think even just in terms of raw confidence, this is a crazy pick from the guys from Flipside, but I don't know how confident they can be in it. So I, I think we're going to have to see SK Gaming win this. Yeah, it does seem clear. It's got none of the head guys. SK for you, SK for you, Yenko. Hard to see past them. All right, then. Game's ready. The players are so keen, they've already started. So let's jump into it. The casters are ready to enjoy SK Flipside. Map two is none other than DDK and James Bardoff. One of the things, actually, is that Blade's old team, that team, were quite proficient on Nuke. They had really nice executes into the A site, and one of the more impressive teams that we saw on Nuke, aside from the obvious Astralis and so on. And uh, that's something we might, we might actually see a lot of here, because it's very easy, in some senses, to actually get into the upper site, as opposed to the uh, previous iterations, because right now there's so much cover to get through the squeaky door into the upper bomb site, as well as the fact that you're much more limited as the TTs when it comes to movement options on the rafters to actually stop that. So it's going to be really, really interesting, because Flipside, uh, and, and with a mind like Blaze behind the operation, there is so much for him to work with when it comes to this map, uh, especially featuring that, uh, that catwalk that goes all the way along the outside from the silo as well towards the, uh, the CT heaven. So th this will be very interesting. And as we haven't seen it too much, I I'm, I'm looking forward to some fresh, innovative stuff. Hopefully, there, is, there has been preparation on this, uh, this map for both teams that is sufficient enough. Yeah, one of the biggest problems coming in for Flipside is that they're playing against players like Cold, like Fur, like Fallen, and so on. And that's just going to be a huge problem going forward. SK coming in as the reigning defending champions won't be feeling any pressure. A very solid, comfortable, and they will feel easy victory. You know, as long as you prepare, then you put yourself in a great position to win. That's what, exactly what they did on Mirage. Flipside were never really in the game. Right, we're about to start the pistol in the second game of this best of three. SK, one map up against Flipside at the moment. SK starting on the CT side. Flipside with it all to do here, bringing the noise on the T side. Absolutely. I'm really curious to see how the buy is going to look for the T side in, in particular Dan. as well. Yes. Fallen has dropped dual dressers to Fur, who's bought Kevlar. What is the purpose of this? I died, honestly. I can't, I can't hazard a guess, James, because I'm with you. The 5-7 is superior, but maybe 
maybe they will show us the way, show us the light with the, the jewelies there onto foe. We'll have to see how that's going to come into play. And as far as the bike is going for flip side, they have the raid boss in the world. It. Tech 9 dropped to him and he bought some Kevlar as well with it. And Blade is uh, the guy that sacrificed himself in that sense. And he's bought himself a single smoke. And right now it's actually going to be Flipside just holding off in the lobby area to begin things off. Now, Fur is looking for the close range high fire rate. He's standing on top of the hut into A, so it seems he is the anti rush device. Kevlar and Jewel Bretters, or Jewel Elites, whichever one they are in this game. Might be a bit old school. Fallen with a smoke. No diffuse kit here on a CT side. He's biding their time in the D. You can see Fur just ready and waiting for this rush to come in. That smoke suggests they could go for a vent push, but it seems it's going to be ramp trying to pull the rotation there. An isolated player on the ramp area. Yeah, that's a uh, good work from Taco, though he just falls back straight away, which is a smart way to play it, but he gets caught on the ladder, and that is maybe a mistake from Taco, and that's going to be well done at catching, catching that mistake quite easily. And four versus four now as the lower bomb side is up for grabs there for the flip side team, and they're able to get the plan as well. And look at this uh, crazy position, but Fallen actually expects it. Won't be good enough, though, because Blade will pick up the kill, and now they're down another man before they yet to get onto this bomb defuse. And there's players all over the place here for FNX to work with. And there it is, Markov able to nail FNX there as things get worse and worse here. Julie is starting to come into play from Furries. He's made a rotation in. Cold jumping through the window into the control room. And all of a sudden, it's just Markov versus Cold. Who will claim that headshot? It's going to be Markov against Cold. And that is a wonderful round from Flipside. Really nice post plant positions there. Markolov planted the bomb on the side of whatever that thing is with uh, well, that it holding the door position for him. Then Markolov moves into the small room while well, that it stays behind the site. While well, that it gets taken down, but then, then there is another crossfire with Shara over towards the double doors as well. So flip side causing massive problems for SK there as they come in for that retake. Very nicely done. SK never had time on their sides, not having a diffuse kit in that round. They will move on to double scouts here. Fallen and Cold Zero coming in for the scouts. See for charging with those uh, dual elites. So, what is the play here from the CTs? FNX is the only man who has Kevlar at the moment. Flipside starting off very passive indeed. Again, this is a, a new map where history needs to be written. They don't know what to expect, perhaps, from these uh, CTs, so they will start off slowly. And uh, it's a map where there are lots of close quarters engagements to be had by the SK side. Two five sevens onto Fur and FNX, respectively. FNX with a smoke, Cold Zero with a kit. Let's see if that comes into play later. Minute 50 in on the clock now. Just a very slow affair indeed to begin things off with uh, this round of nuke. Obviously, flip side want to be wary of any crazy aggressions, and things will be much more unknown on the new nuke. We can see Wild is it just waiting tentatively there for a push from SK, but they're not going to give it to him just yet. The scouts are very dangerous. You need to definitely find ways to uh, use smokes to get across the open spaces if you want to traverse them so you don't get caught by the scouts. If you get tagged at all by, by the scouts, it actually makes a massive difference uh, because there'll be players holding 5.7s and beagles to finish you off uh, in the closer ranges when you get onto a bomb site. So you really need to avoid getting tagged. And so far, it's so good in that sense. For Flipside, they're starting to get the approach on the outside. They've made their way down secret, and uh, Shara's got to be careful getting tagged down there, but he's able to escape, and it looks like Flipside will make their way below. They need to do it quickly. There are 20 seconds left. The rotation, not as fast as it was an old nuke, but still fast. The crossfire's already in position here. Fallen over towards the ramp. Fur and Co. are on the high ground there. And what well, it's going to have to hold the angle, but the back plant is going to work out for the T's. They've made it pay off for them. Four versus three now. SK coming in to do what they can, but with two scouts, it's going to be hard. Now Fallen's the last man standing for his team with the scout, and this round should be over here for Flipside. Markov needs to hold on to the AK, though, and he will be able to do so. Flipside play the clock. They take the right decision with the stack over towards the A side. Again, that being able to plot the bomb behind the structure there is very, very key. Allows a teammate to go in, come in from double doors and hold one of the only angles they can be taken down from. And it's cool to see as well because obviously Flipside is showing us, okay, this is one of the, our anti-ecos. I'm sure they're going to go with one that's, that they're the most confident with to begin with. You know, we saw the, much like on most maps, you know, slow approach, just covering any aggressive pushes from the CTs. Then they take, uh, they take that control towards Secret and get down to the lower bomb site together. And that seems to be their anti-eco. We'll have to see how that evolves over time. And uh, we're going to see another eco for SK will Flipside run the same sort of strategy. So far, it does look like the opening is the same and it looks like Shara will be tested tested outside this time and it looks like also Markov in lobby will also receive some love from Fallen there but it's going to be uh, should be a pretty easy round to close out from this point forwards.
Yeah, they, they don't have to play as slow as the last round because round two is the one where the CTs are going to have the pistols, have the little utility here and there. This round, much less likely because SK will need all their money for their buy. Cliffside, though, they're going to sit on their two frags for now. See if there's any reaction, any rotation, any push from what remains of SK in this round. But nothing doing so far. Taco's in a sneaky position towards the B bomb site, just waiting for any plants to come in. But again, because the T's can plant behind the structure there, he, he may not be as effective as he would otherwise might like to be. And you, have to, you do have to wonder if we're going to see those dodgy plants come on top of those structures towards A, towards B. Very controversial plant spots. We'll see if those come into play a bit later. They, they do have their inherent risks as well for in the vents now. And Taco's position has not been checked. What is going for the open plant, actually, which is unnecessary here. They don't really need to take those risks, especially not having checked that. That's a lesson learned, hopefully. Taco's still behind the door now. The door's being blasted open there, and he'll get taken down, leaving FNX alone. One thing that I'm uh, wondering if we'll see is actually uh, SK on the CT side picking up some shotguns. Because, I mean, a nuke used to be a map where you could r run the shotgun on the upper bomb site quite effectively. We see that quite often from players like in the <laughs> JW, I would power swag. Let's go, <laughs> go ahead really, really far back. Um, but it, it was very viable, and, and you can build a bank uh, from it, much like JW does also on Cobblestone. And uh, they've got fur. He's like the shotgun master and the SMG master. So that'd be really fun to see if they start uh, running that sort of play. But uh, we will see a full rifle setup with the open play for SK Gaming on their first proper buy round, although they're going to be limited on the money. It'd be really nice to see a very fast round from Flipside here to try to just play the shock and all. It's always uh, interesting to see how a team, a CT side, will try to deal with that. Fallen, AWP, no armor. Not much in the, in the name of utility here for the CT side, so I'm quite curious to see how aggressive they're going to get. You can see Fallen posting up there on the ramp area. The box in front of him, the red box, you can, if you're shoulder peeking with a rifle, for example, or even an AWP, you can shoot through the bottom right corner of it. You can spray players down who are trying to rush you. Something you used to see on the old nuke. Some of the uh, old very game players are very adapted to doing that. Maybe we will see that here later on as things progress. Again, Fallen will need to hold a very tight angle. Sees a shoulder jump. Well, sees a jump past. And he's got to be careful now because uh, people can come out very closely indeed and take him by surprise. He knows only one person is close. Well, that it can't really afford to creep into the angle. Yeah, this this battle could be pretty interesting right now because if one of the gets that, that's a very very big win game. It gives a lot of space to flip side, but I like that he's actually just going to smoke it off and force a really hard decision, which would be to move through the smoke, which is definitely not advisable. And th thankfully, you know, flip side won't go for it. There's no need to do it, but there is a need to do something right now because they don't have much time. A nice uh, smoke there on the corner on that outer catwalk, and uh, it's looking. Like, Flipside might st might be running out of time right now because the bomb has uh, only just been picked up in lobby. They don't really have much space. So what it will take the risk now because, again, Flipside need to get some map control and they're finally going to take over Ramp, forcing Fallen back. But he could still pose massive problems here for Flipside. Indeed, and he doesn't really have anybody to help him over towards this B bomb site. Cold is up towards A. He's got a teammate there as well. And uh, the numbers are streaming in, but Fallen from that small room, going to take the first frag. Taco coming in for support now. Waylander on a flank. He could take two down, but it's only going to be one. Trades for both sides now. The clock is running out. Markov doesn't have time to plant the bomb here. It needs three and a half seconds, and he's going to get taken down as well. SK get their first round on the board, and they should probably rescue the AWP as well. Indeed, they will do exactly that. So we're seeing it again, flip side. And you can, it's much more. Um, I mean, you don't have to go so to be so critical of a team on, on a map like this, which is much newer, to more or less mess up the timings a little bit, as we've seen you know, previously happen on Mirage, actually, mostly, where they're basically they're playing that default out and no opportunities can be created, no opening picks, nothing like that, no situation where the CTs force them into a disadvantage, forcing them to actually react in a way. And so they just let too much time go, and it's like, okay, we don't actually have enough time to do something if something goes wrong. So. That might be a bit of a nuke experience thing. We'll have to see yeah, if we see any more of that. This is a journey of discovery for the teams and the casters alike. Lots to learn from the approach of these two sides for holding things down over towards the A site. So far, so good. But there's a wall of smoke outside, and the T's are moving into the lower area once again. Astana Dragons actually used to do a wall of smoke outside every single round to just deny information to the CT side. They would always have to guess. Sometimes Astana Dragons would walk past the smoke. Sometimes they'd be all in main, in, in control, in, in a lobby area. Sorry, in radio, not control. So they would vary things up. Two-man lead here for SK as Flipside have map control over towards B, but they don't have the personnel at the moment. What is alone in the control room at the moment with the bomb? 
This is, uh, I mean, it's got well under there in the vents, but uh, Mark Lovers is towards radio. So it, it's, they're very spread out. If anything goes wrong there with what are they, that is essentially the round loss. Obviously, the down two players already. And they have gained some forward positioning here. It doesn't seem like SK are going to prematurely rotate. They're allowing the space to go to the flip side. Then they can crush them on the retake, which is actually a very smart way to handle things because it means they can really use their numbers to coordinate in there. Taco gets an opportunity. He cannot get the, the uh, frag, though. And actually, minimal damage is done as well. Waylander picking up one and Markloff another one. And already things looking actually much better here for Flipside. But finally, a response from the Brazilians as FNX comes in. But Markloff is not done holding down the ramp position. And he has a great vantage point to work from. He's even going to pick up the AWP. Looking for the shots. Now the flick is sensational there from Markolov. Beautiful work from Flipside. Down to three players. They'll secure the round somehow against five. Stereo Orp frags coming in there just as Markolov takes one player down. Well, that it opens the door when the defuse attempt is made and shot, shoots a player in the back. Very nice stuff by Flipside. And it seems one key thing about the retakes we're seeing here and, and the, the battle for control over B is flanks and flanks on flanks coming through the vents from the upper area. It was important for SK, but didn't take them over the line. Their economy will be reset. We're going to have four pistols and a Mag-7 onto FNX, who is playing on the A site. We'll see if he heads towards Squeaky. Fur is poking around the hut position at the moment. And Orland's uh, going for some aggression. Blade's going to get his bell rung and move out of there. He can swap positions with a teammate who's close by. And it seems Flipside may speed up. Taco's got two, five, seven kills. What's going on here? There's only two plays left now. This is a disaster for Flipside. The frags are coming back in though, four foot, so they're starting to control a desperate situation as Taco, he has to bomb and the open T spawn, why not? Let's see if he's going to be able to hold this one down. He's got no Kevlar to work with, but will he be able to land the shots? They're going to realize soon exactly where he is as well, so the element of surprise will not be alive for long for him as flip side slowly but surely eliminate position by a position. But Taco, he's going to just reveal himself there, wanting to look for that frag immediately. But they spot him and he doesn't get an opportunity to go for a shot. But there's one and Taco connects. Markov's down and now it's all going to be down to Waylander as the smoke is going to land. And that is problematic as Taco runs through the smoke and gets sprayed down by Waylander. Flip side claiming another round, but it should really not have been that close. Indeed, Taco from out of nowhere getting two, five, seven kills off screen. Didn't see where he was at the time, but that is obviously going to be colossal. And it was an expensive round for Flipside. There he is pushing all the way through into uh, almost T spawn there, taking them by surprise. And that could have been a colossal failure for Flipside. It was on a money position, but they still have SK on the eco here, looking for the full buy in the next round. Flipside off to a great start here versus SK. FNX back onto the Mag 7 again. Maybe it paid off in, for him in the previous round. Fallen and Taco over towards the ramp. Flipside moving faster to the outside area. Yeah, so they could actually put a lot of pressure towards the, uh, the outside very soon indeed. And that would be quite fun to see. I think we haven't seen a lot towards outside at the moment. You know, really, I mean, they've mostly just been clearing a path towards the secret area where they can then go blow the stairs or down the stairs into the B-bomb side. But it'd be nice to see them kind of take more liberties there. But Taco is going to be pushing with that eagle and finds himself a connection. Surgery performed onto Blade. Blade will not see the light of day. And it's going to be now a flip side that does need to get something done here. Pick up the bomb and perhaps use, abuse the outside control that they have. FNX went for a peek with the Mag-7 through the hut, but there was a player looking through the hole in the, in the kind of ladder path who tagged him down to 12 HP, but he still has map control. He still has Mag-7 and he still has that close quarters advantage here. Flip side, that could cause them problems. Are they going to go for another late B push? You've got Waylander coming down behind the vents. So uh, he may try to clear things out for his team. Again, his path is a dangerous one. There's nobody there yet, but these pistols, you've got to be weary about them. Fur gets taken down. There is a player in that B room once again. Meanwhile, people are falling elsewhere here for the SK side. Just FNX and Taco remaining. FNX coming down the vent into flames. He just jumped. He literally just jumped into flames. What is he doing? I don't know what it, that was about. He looked at flames and dived into them, Dan. He was done with this world. He was done with the rounds. I, I can't explain it. Much like the uh, Julies, but uh, it's going to be a 6-1 regardless for flip side. They're doing a great job on their T side. And, and this is, again, one of the things that, you know, you sort of ex should expect out of Flipside. They, they're a team that, with Blade, can be very tactical and they, un they can understand new maps very quickly and uh, the new dynamics. And they're hitting their shots right now as well, which always is going to be something that's quite helpful. And uh, right now, it's the full buy of SK to contend with once more. They're 
they're okay on grenades. It could be a bit better. And it's like, what is this going for a fast pick? Oh, it actually just swaps out to another weapon quickly and then back to the AWP. And so there was an opportunity there for a frag to be made. But he'll escape with 21 HP. Although it should count his lucky stars that he's alive right now. Look at the difference in the setup from the CTs. Flipside have been exploiting the secret area of this map, going from the outside down the stairs. And now Fallen's positioned himself down there. He's ready and waiting. It's a surprise welcoming party here for the Brazilians. We'll see if Flipside up to uh, try the punch. Or did it? Indeed, he got tagged early on as that smoke came down. And nothing doing so far. Ooh, so we may see uh, some shenanigans into the A bomb site here. More options available once you smash the glass, and that might just, uh, even if they don't choose to execute with through those windows, it it's, makes SK scared of the smokes and nades flying in. That I think may cause a difference in their rotation. Yeah, I think Blade got a peek in with the, with the flash timing there to the to the window to, towards main, and a bit of information collected. So you can see again, you know, Flipside like trying to make informed decisions as how, as to how they play the round out, and for the small cost of two hundred dollars in that case. So it's always good to see. And uh, Blade has his map control, he's got the information, and they're deciding to go for a play outside. Let's see if there's anyone to uh, stop them, though. Cold is actually in position, and he will get the first couple kills. And that is a big deal right now, because the bomb is out there. And uh, what is it? Is the only one to support it now? 20 seconds on the clock, and Cold is just wasting tons of time here. Look how out of position Flipside are. They need to get this bomb down. They're still in control of it now, but I think Fallen is close to that bomb, and he's coming up the stairs, so Blade's never going to make it. Five seconds on the clock here, and Flipside are going to lose a round. And I was, I was going to say it was really nice positioning from Fallen and Cold. Fallen in the secret area, moving up eventually as time passes. Cold outside the garage, waiting for the flank, either from lower or higher along the catwalk. Very nice stuff. Flipside couldn't figure it out in time, and SK get a desperate round on the board. It's just the second time it's happened now. You know, Flipside sort of not interpreting how much time they need in the round correctly. That one took another again like too long. Called that amazing defense here from this this brilliant off angle, and uh, that's, that definitely shows some uh, some map awareness, some map experience there from Cold and his teammates. And now we'll see them picking up another round, but they need to stop themselves from getting reset. The money for Flipside is actually pretty terrible. So this, this round basically means two for either team right now. So it either is going to really cement Flipside in this nuke match or be the opposite. And looks like Fallen's got Cold covered there as the Waylander cannot make the jump across the secret. And that means also that Cold's position is still unknown. Yeah, there are some nice self-pop flashes from Cold's position as well. And you can thank Taco with that 5-7 for the problems that Flipside are facing financially at the moment. This is an important round for both sides. And again, what was, what's good that we're seeing from SK, despite them only having two rounds on the board, is they're, them constantly changing up their CT defenses. And that's going to cost time for Flipside, trying to figure out where people are. And if they can't do it in time, then it's going to cause them problems, as we saw in the previous round. While they're going for a raw peek into the position, just after the flashbangs, and he'll be punished for doing so. Fallen changes position. That bomb goes flying through the air, and that is the round shut down. SK wiping out Flipside. Not a single man lost for the Brazilians. Yeah, that's a really big deal considering that into the next round where Flipside can't really afford to purchase very much. That, that means two rounds that could potentially be very clear and they really need all the money they can get at the moment. Especially the CT defense is so expensive on a map like this. You really want all those incendiaries and smoke grenades. You know, much like uh, Inferno, Rip Inferno, but uh, it's... It's going to be a situation where we get to finally see maybe some, you know, some special tactics. Maybe uh, Flipside have something in the bag for situations like this. We see a, a, a couple smokes and a couple flashbangs and some Tech Nines. So there is definitely a plan here that Blade has in mind to uh, lead his team to victory or at least to a bomb plant and some damage in this round. Yeah, again, Blade, one of the in-game leaders on the old nuke that was really good at executing into sites here. They have some nades, although some of them just disappeared as Shara gets taken down. So maybe we won't see it on this particular round after all. Obviously it is maybe different. Not sure if it's more difficult or otherwise to execute into the A site. We can perhaps find out a bit later on once the buy comes back in. But for the meantime, we have the spray downs. That gun is too far to retrieve there. You can see Fur can hold it down as it would be a bit of a gauntlet run to pick up that weapon. So we'll see what they choose to do. Running through the smoke, nice two-man spray down for Taco. Not sure if he saw the bomb there. Finishes off the last play while trying to steal away a pistol. Again, SK, nine players surviving in two rounds for them, great for their economy. And uh, as you mentioned, it would really be very cool to see a nice little set piece into that upper side. And 
We haven't even seen them going for any fast timings towards the, the vents either through Squeaky, and it is a much more doable now than it used to be. So, I mean, as you get more cover, and the timing for the CTs from Rafters is much worse, but, well, I guess we'll have to see. I'm, I'm sure SK Gaming are going to you know, really love strategies like that as well. I'm sure we're going to see it at some point. But uh, now it's going to be finally an inferior by the flip side versus what SK Gaming have on uh, to bring to the table as uh, Cole goes for in at a fast, really fast position towards Secret. We saw him there previously and he wasn't discovered, so he's going to reuse that position as Flipside once again playing out uh, what looks to be a little bit of a default. They've got Shara outside just defending against aggression. There are smokes all over the place right now. So there's not really all that much that Flipside can do. They just have to wait out these initial smokes. I can't wait to watch the demo and see exactly how Cold got there. Just running outside as opposed to going through B and up secret the, the old way, which I think takes too long on this particular map. So, Markolov executing lays into the site. Is this the execute we were waiting for from Blade? Waylander gets taken down. So far, not so good. FNX finally gets traded, and it seems it's going to be a drop into the B-bomb site. For may not realize what's going on. There is a smoke around there. Shara still looking for maybe a bit of a rotation being in the uh, early T areas at the moment. Just facing radio, holding down the back. Taco gets taken down. Well, they're in the vents, and SK may not know how to respond to this. Yeah, this is a really nice strategy. It's executed quite wonderfully so far, but they need to close it down. And they have all the position to do that. Beautiful sandwich action in the vents there onto Fur. And now Cole Zero in a position to try to make good of this, but he can't. It's down to Fallen against two, and he hasn't got much time left. That bomb is very, very close to exploding as Fallen goes in. And he manages to find the bunny hopping well done it. But again, there's so little time left on the bomb. He connects the shot! Is there time? Fallen is gonna clutch. One versus two, that was absolutely fantastic there. Leading by example. He doesn't often miss. He does not often miss. Flipside showing too much leg on the stairs there and they get taken down for it, Dan. Unbelievable stuff, just showing a bit of arm as well. Just too much flesh in all areas. He only needs to see a millimeter. He sees it straight away. He's about to go for the diffuse, but he sees the elbow, Dan. The elbow's enough, he takes the elbow. He's so good. He's so good, isn't he? And that's uh, that's so needed as well because you know, coming back into this against Flipside, who look very dominant. You know, SK has shown a lot of composure and uh, still hitting all those awesome shots. So we've got a real game on our hands. That is for certain. Although that said, Cold is going to take a lot of damage early into the round. And uh, perhaps it's because this time this Tease took a fast timing outside and he had to dart straight down the secret stairs. So looks like uh, that's not going to pay off for him too much this time. But Fallen able is, is able to actually pick up a kill as the T's make their way down below. And Cole is really in a great situation here, playing with these stairs, playing the headshot angles. And that works out perfectly with his low HP. Trading one for one is actually not too bad with 22 health. But Flipside do have the control room, despite a man disadvantage. It's going to be hard, but it is doable from this position. Yeah, Markolov still lurking. And while SK are rotating towards the B bomb side to hold things down there, Markolov can try and exploit this from the back. Speaking of which, you see Taco going back towards the, the uh, ramp area just to make sure there's no sleeky flank as everything slows down. You know, the questions start to pop in the heads of the CTs here. Trying to put their heads in the mind of Blade and figure out what he wants to do with his men, where he's moving these pawns. Markloft biding his time now. What did it? Just creeping around the B-bomb site. They know there have to be CTs close, so they want to take them down. You see they have to retrieve the bomb as well. And they will assume angles are being held in uh, both directions. FNX now asking questions, and he's going to go for the flank, so Markov might be in trouble here. He's going to cover Taco's back as FNX, heading towards the radio room, and Markov hasn't been seen just yet, but he's surely about to go down. FNX has seen Markov, and he's going to take him down from the back now. Taco still on the B ramp, and he's going to get taken down by Blade. So it's uh, what did it with. 12 HP, the bomb ticking away, and surely he is not long for this world as he's got three players to contend with, all full on HP. The smoke goes down and spray through the door. He's able to find one kill, actually, and there's no trade coming in, but there it finally will be uh, the refrag situation as revenge is had, thanks to Fur, and uh, the bomb will be defused. And that will be the round for SK Gaming, so they're going to make it 6-6 uh, six to six there. Very nicely done by them as uh, they bring things back against Flipside, who do look quite well-versed on their T side of this map so far. And the interesting thing as well is that we haven't seen Flipside resorting to any uh, particularly, uh, particularly you know, rush-type plays. Usually they are, they are starting out fairly standard. They're letting the, uh, the smokes wear away. They want a more consistent approach. And that really does tell you that they have a lot of confidence in how they can build their attack, essentially, into these rounds. And 
They still, thanks to the uh, Lost Bonus as well as the Bomb Plant, have a great amount of cash. So they've got the Orp onto World Edit, AKs and Nades on everybody else. So still a good good look here on flip size buy. Initial smokes and flashes to secure map control. Waylander and Wilder, they're not going to be so fast towards Secret on this occasion. And again, Fallen's mixing things up now. And this is a really important fact. It's so important for the CTs to keep changing their formation because it takes time for Flipside to figure this out. And uh, that, that is time taken away from trying to get a bomb down later on. Six to six now, the score finally getting evened up here. Five rounds in a row for SK on the first map. They were quite dominant, and now they seem to have figured things out here, and they seem to be in their mojo, in their groove. Perhaps they will run away with the half. There's not many rounds left in this half. There's not many round nades, not many nades left, sorry, on the CT side. Slightly more here for flip side. Yeah, just one smoke left on SK, and so flip side have kind of timed it perfectly because they're starting to make the move now that there is a minute left, and so few nades on SK. So that, that's great news for them. We see the Wall of Smokes there covering the approach now to Secret. But again, SK don't know how many players are actually going down there. And in reality, it's just going to be one in this case. And they may, may really feel that it could be much more as it has been in the previous rounds. But instead, we have the movement towards Radio. So they want to kind of get this split going onto the lower bomb site. And it's Fallen, who's on top of things there. And he, they're going to try to go for the refrag aggressively. Fallen makes the second shot, of course. And they are still trying to get the revenge, but it seems so incredibly difficult. Finally, Waylander able to find that kill all the way from Garage, but right now it's just desperation as there's just not enough time here for Flipside. Bit of extra damage at the end, but once again, not giving themselves the space to work with if there is a problem. Yeah, it's really interesting. When this map first came out, people were thinking, how on earth do the CTs defend anything? This is this is a disaster, this is terrible. But now we're starting to see that it's just, it's difficult for the T's to figure out where the uh, the CTs are posted up. When you have an AWPA, the strength for forward, and look at him, he's been all over the map. He's been in secret, he's been outside, he's been near CT spawn, and now he's over towards ramp, causing more problems. And that was hard for Markolov as well. As the second man, when there were two there, he didn't want to be too close to his teammate, so they get b taken down together, but he still wants to try and trade. Worst case scenario, very awkward stuff there, nicely done. And SK take the lead. So will we see that Sefis onto the upper side? They do have the smokes and molotovs with the tech nines and a couple armors. So they definitely want to get it in pretty quickly here. I mean, there's not much more that you can do other than rushing into the uh, the ramp area with such a setup. And indeed, we can see the molotov from Markov. I think that goes on top of the hut actually. Or previously, I think he, they threw a molotov on top of the huts which is definitely quite a, an important position to eliminate when you're pushing, going for the push in. You see Markle setting up all the grenades. Indeed, the uh, Molotov will land on top of the hut there, and uh, that's going to give them some cover. They can just fall down through the vents. The vent drop, that's really smart there from Flipside. Let's see if they can make it work, though. Yeah, Markov went for a flank through Hut as well, but Firm is still waiting there, ready and waiting. The numbers running out for Flipside once again, doing really nice smoke executes, but they're just not keeping people alive here. The bomb finally goes down, but Wilder, it's only got a PG-50. That's enough, though, to take down Taco. Two versus three. He's going to get taken down. It's Shara alone versus three. You can see Angles being held in the vent. Now he's coming in, looking the wrong way, and he'll get taken down there by FNX. So, I mean, again, we said, like, back in the days, that team, they were really good at executes with Signos executes, but Flipside are losing players left and right. Yeah, eight to six, what a, what a comeback there from SK. Really felt like Flipside knew exactly what they were doing, but uh, we can actually see a bit of a mix-up as well. We get the double ops rolling in there for SK Gaming, and Cole, the player that's been trying to just, you know, run as fast as he possibly can to get to Secret very quickly, just to get uh, some cool setups going there. He's got an orb right now, so I have to see if he's going to play more aggressively towards that position with the orb. And indeed, he is moving towards the outside still, so we'll have to see how uh, he's going to play that one. Obviously, Fallen is orping from the other side of the map as well, but Wilder is going to be the one to make the opening kill. Finally, Wilder is going to land that uh, shot that will give Flipside an early round advantage. Hopefully, they won't play it too slowly this time around. Cold just waiting for a peak to come up on, on the roof. He had a teammate in, uh, I think it was Fallen, who was up there as well, and I think Fallen fell off the rail by accident. So he's in a position he wasn't expecting around the main area. You can see all the T's moving around outside now, posturing. Fallen's moved into secret via vent as well, and he might get there very timely indeed because Flipside are just starting to move behind these smokes. Cold Zero will use those smokes as a wall and take down Shara. No answer from Flipside. And there's Fallen in position towards secret now. Big problems to Flipside. 
And they can't seem to stop the AWPs of SK Gaming. And they've lost so much as we have all these positions just being held perfectly by Fallen and Cold. And now it's, uh, it's finally some movement here from Flipside into the, towards that lower bomb site. But they still have so much to do to claim the space that they need to take that bomb and plant it. And we can see Fallen's going to play around these stairs, and he's been connecting everything so far. Will, will there be a shot to be made? Yes, there will. Fallen just connects Blade, shooting him like a clay pigeon straight out of the sky, as it's just welded it down there now to do something. But the bomb is down, and surely he doesn't feel like he has any hope. It's just so limited. They're so limited on the time that's left in the round at this point. And the bomb is going to be left there for the time being, as what it will swap out for the AK-47 and see if he can get some extra frags at the very least. But it's only 10 seconds to do this now. Yep, he's got to get the plant down. It's the last round of the half, and he is going to be put out of his misery. Nine to six half here for SK. And I do feel like we're learning a lot about the map as things go on. You saw the wall of smokes come out there in that last round, but SK instantly used that to put Cold in a position where he would otherwise be exposed, and then he can cover the higher area. So again, with such, uh, such an early stage of Nuke, it's going to be really difficult for these teams to adjust on the fly. We will see if Flipside can get back into this in the second half. See you back here soon. Flipside had a fantastic start to Nuke, a map that they definitely need so they can go to that third. But all of a sudden, eight rounds in a row, out of nowhere from SK, showing that they really are very, very clued up when it comes to Nuke. And now we're going to move into the T side for SK, and uh, from a strategic sense, I'm really curious what Fallen has in plan. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting picking a new map against SK when they don't choose to veto it, because Again, we mentioned about their Mirage. We see the evidence from Fallen's YouTube content, how drilled they are for every single map. And we see that from their CT side. We see that not only from how they position themselves, how they vary their positioning, but also how they react to the things that the T's put out on the map, like those, like those Wall of Smokes, etc. Now SK with a three-round lead will start on the T side. First comes a pistol, of course, so we won't see the full executes just yet, but maybe they'll have something special in store for us on the pistol round as well. And the question is going to be, is, is six rounds are going to be enough for the CT side of flip side? And I feel like uh, it will certainly be the harder of, the, of the, you know, the two asks when it comes to T side, CT side. I think CT will be much more difficult for them. And so we've got SK Gaming with uh, actually a handful of grenades here on Fallen and Cold. And uh, otherwise just rocking the Glof Kevlar, going for the rush into, through radio into the ramp room. They'll find Shara, and Shara will actually get a frag there despite being overwhelmed. That's actually a fairly good result considering what he had to deal with, but now it's down to flip side on that rotation into the lower bomb site. 
So we have the smokes coming down into some of the choke points here. Very nice stuff by SK, but are they going to commit to the bomb plant? Indeed they are. So one smoke is specifically for that reason. And look at the effect of it. Meanwhile, two frags coming in. Make that three. Wayander alone versus four players. He's got Kevlar, but not much else. No, no defuse kit. And there are too many people coming his way. He needs to find headshots. He finds two, but he will fall to the flames. He will be barbecued, Dan. It is Friday, not Sunday, but he is going to get roasted. So SK will pick up that pistol round with a great little strategy there. You know, as you as you mentioned, that smoke for purpose to get that bomb down, and that's so important as well because the bomb site is so open, and, and they will they know that there's going to be so many CTs quickly down the vents because the rotation on a map like this is actually very fast. It's one of the reasons why Nuke is a little bit different to the majority of maps. Uh, rotation for the CTs is much much quicker than your cobblestones and your dust twos and and uh, your mirages and so on and so forth due to those vents. So it's going to be uh, flip side just optimal to go for not a, a full force buy here but just you know investing just in a few pistols a couple of grenades moving outside with, with a bit of aggression but Fallen's going to intercept that with a scout get himself a nice little tank and uh, Furs will charge of course with the MAG-10 on the outer catwalk nobody likes to be intercepted there that's for sure Coldzera threw a jumping flash up high over the roof of A which is kind of pointless because uh, it's so far away it will flash players for maybe 0 0.05 of a second which is Almost useless. Blade about to serve himself up for the Brazilian BBQ. Choosing to move away. Not much to really be done from flip side in this round unless uh, we get some lucky close quarter situation with the 5.7 or the P250. Again, that 5.7 2K from Taco in the first half, he had pushed all the way through T territory towards the truck in T-Spawn to get those kills. Even the truck got nerfs on this map, by the way, in T-Spawn. One of the first things I went to inspect. Can we still go in the truck? Denied. SK moving into the B-bomb site now. Again, the flip side still have numbers, but there is 30 seconds left. That's still a reasonable amount of time here. And look at that. SK clearing out that area. That was a problem for flip side on their T side in one of the rounds where SK were on an eco. We saw some P250 shenanigans there. SK will make sure the same thing doesn't happen to them. Yeah, and that actually made a big difference to all the economic uh, hits that they took in rounds like that. So, I mean, looks pretty good here for SK so far. And so uh, I, I wonder actually whether flip side will be able to show us how to play this map a little more aggressively outside or something similar or you know, what kind of solutions that you know they've discovered because again be this map hasn't been played like a huge amount especially not at a competitive level we're going to see a lot of teams with their own interpretations on on a lot of different types of setups when it comes to you know, the, the defense and the offense but uh, business as usual and one thing that i really enjoy from sk is it, here is that they they don't care about eliminating the remaining members of flip side they don't want to risk trying to kill somebody who's playing a perfect, like a really good engagement for him with a P250 close range to, you know, to kill a guy with $300 of investment and then lose you know, thousands yourself. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. So I really like that SK Gaming have that discipline and focus there and uh, keep so many members alive. And so now flip sides, well, it's a similar story as the last round for them. So well, that it has managed to siphon a MAC-10. Other than that, not much going on here for flip side. So we should see another round going in the favor of SK, who seem to be headed towards double the score of flip side. Fallen continuing on the scout, having a peek outside. has been subjected to some grenade damage. But uh, there's not much else going on here for flip side. Let's have a look and see where well, that it is. He's on top of the roof in uh, hut. On top of the hut in A, sorry. Getting a bit tongue just in today. SK just being meticulous, being careful, forcing the CTs away from many areas, funneling them into others. And they'll be punished for uh, being in those areas as Waylander gets taken down towards Garage. Up close, Mokolov will shoot fur in the face. That's an AK, that's a problem for SK. It's funny because I think SK actually threw two Molotovs towards that position, so they're, thinking, they're definitely thinking, oh, there's, there is certainly no one here. But of course, Markov is going to find his way in there, steal away an AK-47. Let's we'll see how he's going to be able to use that one. Uh, there's an incentive for him to try to get damage in here, actually, because his team has a buy next round regardless, because they have actually played with very, very low investments and no force buys. So damaging the economy of SK Gaming, taking down another two, three players, 
is definitely a good option, I think, for him to try to make happen with that AK-47. And Taco's going to give his position away there. Blade looking for the pursuit, but doesn't want to overstep. And looks like Taco will easily deal with him as we get a, a bunch of frags coming in. Cold and FNX as well. And now it's just Shara. So looks like overall SK Gaming not losing too, too much. And I'll be fairly happy with the result of this round. 12 for 6, it's buy time. Well, that it has 6150 straight for the AWP. I do wonder if this is a map where we might see two orbs come into play at some point. Again, you can have one over towards ramp, maybe one outside. For now, it's going to be just a one. Markolov could have opted for one as well. He had 55-50 in the bank, but he chose against it. Two ops on the T side here for SK. That is super interesting. Very curious to see what they have in store with those. This is quite fun, actually, because uh, SK Gaming are one of the best teams in the world, of course, with playing double offs, because you've got Fallen and you've got Cold, so... What is it? With the flick, he finds the connection straight into the face of Fallen. And that is a nice way to start things off for Flipside. So no more double offs for you. And so like Taco, meanwhile, has found himself a bit of a push through radio into a ramp, and he will get a frag, but traded immediately back, and that's not going to be too amazing for SK because they are still at a man disadvantage when all is said and done. What well, did it? Oh, he's got a really nice little gap to play with there, able to spot Fur jumping across. Some good information going for his team as Markle finds some action outside, but it's Fur to take the frag and finally equalize things for SK. Flip side are losing men, map control, and information. Eyes on the map all disappearing. Three versus three. FNX on the ramp for the time being. Cold Zero seems to be moving in his direction. You can see Blade dropping into the vent itself. Waylander still in A. So uh, flip side, even with three players, sort of managing to hold things down here. But SK, they're all moving together, which means they're going to have the trade advantage. If one player goes down for them, it's quite likely that the other two will kill that player. And uh, all flip side seem to be isolated. So that will be very favorable for SK. Blade. Camping in the vent area at the moment, trying to stop any shenanigans over towards V, but he has to watch his front and his back because Flipside have gambled on having two people in the A bomb site. 30 seconds remaining. Well, that it's starting to reposition, jumping down to the floor now. But uh, can he get in a position to rotate fast enough to help his teammate? Yeah, 20 seconds to plant that bomb now. Time is definitely becoming an issue as we have Blade looking to see what he can get. Just repositioning there to the spots where he can see where the bomb port will go in. And surely that's got to be the round there because FNX has to dart back down to pick up the bomb and go for the plant. He has time, but if somebody shoots, he's... Oh, yeah, he's able to get it. Can he do anything else from this? Another nade going out, but well, it will shoot through the smoke and find FNX. So that could have been a little bit crazy, a bit of anarchy, but in reality, well, it will calm things down, pick up the defuse, and that's going to be a round for flip side. And uh, well, that, that was definitely uh, <laughs> quite an interesting round, going three, three against three with a minute left. Well, that it tried to knife him in the smoke, but it took a while to get off the balcony, so uh, he quickly got the orb back out and casually no scoped him to finish things off there. So, a buy coming out for both sides. Fur will be somewhat limited here, it looks like. Tech 9 coming out for him. And that there's an AK on the floor for him to collect as he runs away. Indeed, there isn't. AWP on to Wild at it. So, we'll see if Flipside can hold the next test. What is the play from SK? They've gone from two orbs to four AKs and a pistol. So, we might see a faster play from them. Initial smoke's coming down outside. It seems SK might be setting up for some kind of execute to take some map control outside. Cold Zero and FNX are positioned against the railings here, so it could be a wall of smoke coming in from them as well. They have fallen up here on the high ground, and you see the smoke start to stream in outside. So the move is being made. Markov is going to feel the presence of those T's from SK looming over him. He does have the support from Blade there from the main area, but there's so many smokes down at the moment. Things are very obscured and SK aren't going in quite immediately, but now they're starting to funnel through those smokes. FNX darting through there, soon to reach Markov's position, easily taking down Markov. And we've got Blade now trying to respond, but he's shut out of the situation. The smoke is down and uh, SK Gaming have come out pretty well Despite losing a man here, they've got a lot of position. They've got for creeping on the outer catwalk. So there are a lot of problems here for Flipside. Yeah, there was a big gap in that smoke as well, which I wonder if that was a kind of bait for Flipside. Flipside weren't willing to face the gap in that smoke, which would have helped them stop T's who are moving towards secret. But he had Fur charging around towards main, and now he finds himself in hell. Shara looking away, now finally spots him, and Fur will escape through the window. And Shara can't overextend because, again, he does not have any support from his teammates. Flash is coming in. We've got the high ground. We've got Heaven now in control, and FNX will come in to take 
Shara down from above. Trades will come in, but not in favor of the C team. Everybody falling now, and it's going to be a two versus one. 15 seconds, and again the T's. Now it's SK on the T side having problems with the clock. Yeah, for nine seconds to go, there's no way he can get the bomb and back onto the site in time. So getting some damage in or trying to die after time, uh, before time ends is definitely a prerogative. And it looks like he might actually even be able to survive with everything that he's carrying here because he's he is actually carrying quite a lot of uh, value there. He's got the Tech 9, he's got a couple of uh, grenades as well. So definitely makes a lot of sense because their loss bonus is not that good just yet. So it's going to be uh, 12 to 8 now and uh, things looking. Slowly a bit better here for Flipside after they picked up those last two rounds. But the problem is, is that they've been losing quite a lot of players in these situations. And uh, that's going to mean that they're not going to have as much money in the bank for grenades. But, but worse than that, when SK finally do take a round, they might just re reset Flipside immediately. And SK will, will have so many rounds already, they might even just win the map because of that. Right, SK bringing a few hammers to the fight outside the pub. Not really the correct weaponry in this regard. We'll see if they can make it work. Deep smokes into the hut, causing problems here. Oh, and this actually plays up close. There's one for him, goes for the continuation spray. Wayana coming in for a two-man spray down from the roof itself. Four versus two. First, still in control of this AK, but he's stuck in the squeaky door position, which has been blown wide open. Markov close towards main as well. He can mount a fight with that UMP. Both T's here now. Make that one as it is uh, body after body around the vent position. FNX picks up the AK, but Markolov is still in position, just holding a passive angle here, making sure that there are certain places the T's can't go, and the T's can position accordingly. Markolov comes out, upgrades his gun as well, 12 to 9, the gap being closed here. He's slowly but surely getting closer and closer indeed, and Flipside have a nice buy in store as well, due to that fact, and so the money's starting to build a little bit. But they're still not out of the woods in that sense just yet. SK Gaming could do a lot of round in this, a lot of damage in this round. They've got a pretty respectable buy, a bunch of AKs, a Galil, a good selection of grenades. But again, one thing we haven't really seen is some really, really fast rounds uh, from the T sides of either team just yet. So I'm curious if one of those uh, rounds is going to come out in a situation like this. We've got Fallen, who is very, very fast over the silo, you know, with that Galil, but he's slowing his pace a little bit now as he's aware that CTs might be able to find angles towards him. So just playing passively, holding the default positions, and uh, waiting out the initial. Smoke grenades. Speaking of which, Fur has lined himself up to throw a nade somewhere, but that flash is going to move him from his position. The corner of those uh, yellow stripes on the floor, you can see, well, you could have seen him aiming there. Again, he's lining something up, but what is he lining up? Could be towards secret, could be towards main. We'll have to find that a bit later on as SK seem to be biding their time for the moment. Maybe waiting for the CT grenades to be exhausted. Indeed, it looks like Fur's going to be smoking off the garage area outside. So let's see what they do with it. Two smokes coming in, and indeed it will be a small a wall of smokes coming in from the T side for both teams. Flipside are doing this, now SK are doing this, but the difference is SK choose to push Garage up close or push Main up close. This time it's Garage. What is the response from the CTs? Yeah, the CTs so far just playing it a little bit slowly, trying to make sure that they know exactly what's going on so they don't get faked out here because they do have quick rotation times down through the vents, but they do need somebody, at least one player who's in that position to make sure that the Ts cannot lock them away from the vent rotation. That's often going to be a problem. And what are they? he's got a great position here. And you can see that uh, th there is a player in the vents already for the CTs. He's going to come out at the perfect moment, but somehow Cold is still going to get the frag onto Blade. That is really important. He's down quite low here, but SK Gaming do have a good amount of real estate. However, the bomb is down, and there's no way to really pick it up at the moment. Although FNX and Fur finding themselves a lot of frags in this situation. And finally, it's going to be Cold who picks up the last one to just clean up that rotation. The bomb didn't even get planted, but, but still flip side cut down as they try to get in position to stop the plant. It's super interesting to see the difference that the T sides do when the wall of smoke is outside. When it was when it was flip sides wall of smoke, actually for both teams, when it was flip sides wall of smoke, you had cold on the CT side moving close to the smoke to hold angles towards the uh, silo. Where, when it's uh, SK, they have flashes going into that smoke where they would they would have uh, kind of negated the advantages they're abusing on their own CT side. So flip side are unable to take those same advantages and they're moving towards garage and towards main and stopping rotations from coming in. Again, playing the clock down to a T there. Flip side just uh, maybe a bit fast on the feet. Moving into the crosshairs of the Brazilians and SK will finally extend their lead once again. Force by coming out flip side. We've got the auto shotgun onto Flade. Blade, another gun that we see often used towards Squeaky. That's exactly where he is. 5-7 for Shara. 
AWP onto Wild Red. That will be important, but he needs to step up and get some frags for his team. Currently top fragging on the server. 22 for 15 is Wild Red. It. Shara down to five kills. Yeah, and again, you know, both teams on very low money. So uh, if Flipside can win, somehow win this round, obviously the reason why they've managed to scrap, scrap together this force buy, they can reset SK Gaming and they have a real chance of equalizing the score. This round is so incredibly important because it, likewise, if they lose it, they're pretty much done. So a lot on the line here with worse equipment for Flipside as they will start to receive a push from that ramp. It's that ramp area. It's further the entry of the Shara and not much damage done in the course of that push onto SK Gaming. So things start to seem to get more and more desperate here as they set up a push onto the lower bomb site with all the players in place and all the grenades there as well to secure the bomb plant. As we've seen previously, things looking good here for SK Gaming, but Blaze in there with the shotgun. Almost getting a second one for very low. As Blade comes in, he's going to drop the bomber, and there might be a chance now here for Flipside. Black, black, black. We have the Molotov coming in, and Blaze in trouble. He's going to get barbecued. We've got barbecues all over the place. That's a Brazilian barbecue down, and it looks pretty tasty as well. Three versus three, but a clock is against the T's here. They've got 12 seconds to get this bomb down, and no one's even carrying it at the moment. They need to find these frags because they might not have time to get the bomb down. Seven seconds, six seconds. The bomb's still on the floor, Taka can't find it. They're gonna win by timeout, this is absurd! Waylander and Markolov survive and somehow win the round in the Bedlam, the Mayhem, the Anarchy Dan. What? Markolov picks up both kills after time and they're trying to save their weapons. That's really massive because they have absolutely no money now. This is, that is so game-changing right now. SK Gaming are in a, a really dangerous position right now because they, they kind of want to save twice, but they can't really... I mean, that's going to allow Flipside to just equalize the score pretty much straight away. So Blade, James, with just, a, just an auto shotgun, he somehow saves Flipside. He's Wesley sniping these fools down. Three-round lead now for SK, but the money's not with them because they got wrecked by none other than Markolov, the man with the plan who can, putting in big damage for his team. SK rushing into the A bomb site now. Three of them are dead already. Waylander from high with a two-man spray down. FNX now last man standing. He's dead as well. Everybody gets wiped out. Next round, please. So making a quick affair of things and just wanted to keep the pace up on high. And again, you know, they're in a spot where, okay, maybe they could buy, but really it's incredibly un uh, inadvisable. They need to wait one more round and uh, they can get a few uh, pistols in there to actually keep the pressure up on the flip side. But this should be another round where Flipside like, win it fairly cleanly to uh, reinforce that economy of theirs. But they've got a real chance here now to, uh, to take the lead against SK Gaming if they're able to win SK's eventual buy round, which will be the one after this one. And I mean, after that, that, that uh, them doing so much with so little, that shotgun and so on, it's going to give them quite a bit of a boost from a morale perspective. Flipside are very dangerous right now. We can see Markov, he's, he's pushing outside pretty much alone in the very close positions there, and he, he will go down. That's not, that's suboptimal, James. Yeah, maybe he doesn't realize the colossal damage he did to the economy early on, and he's expecting a buy to come in. That was a risk that maybe wasn't worth taking. They've lost two players now to the one of SK, who still haven't picked up any rifles yet. At least there's that. There's nobody outside apart from first. We'll see if he manages to pick up Markolov's lost weapon. It would leave him somewhat exposed there, so maybe SK will think wiser of it. Indeed, they have moved away. This is so scary for what are they? Because they don't know how close T's could be. Have they pushed the smoke? Have they not pushed the smoke? Lucky for him, they haven't pushed the smoke. And he is going to connect that first shot onto Taco. And he's going to get the hell out of there, knowing how dangerous and how quick those pistoling players can be when they try to advance onto his position. So three versus three now, and things do look a lot better for Flipside. And they actually have a good setup going in here as well. They're not overreacting to a lower play. And instead, they will be very well prepared, I should think, for this uh, eventual push into the upper bomb site. It does look like that's what SK are thinking about right now. They only have 30 seconds, so they can't really mess around too much. And indeed, first going to try to wrap in from main. The clock is not your friend. The clock is your enemy if you're on a T side on Nuke. That's what we're seeing at the moment. Fur getting taken down towards main. That might be a clue that the bomb's headed towards A. 19 seconds left. Well, that it's still on the high ground, waiting for Fallen to peak. Both with pistols now. That 5-7 sounds very dangerous indeed. Well, that it falls, but I might go in his favor. Indeed, it will. FNX gets taken down, as does Fallen soon after. Flipside continue to close the gap. 13 to 12, but the buy will come in now for SK Gaming, so they can put a stop to it all. Right here and right now, if they're able to take this round away from Flipside. But if they, if they lose this round with no bomb plant, Surely they will have the, the loss bonus of four rounds in a row. And they're actually, depending on how much they spend, just, I'm just waiting to see how much I'll leave in the bank. 
Yeah, so they'll be in a very a very sore spot if they lose this round. They probably will have to eco unless they get the bomb down, and then it's going to be very, very marginal um, if they should want to go for a buy or not. Probably won't. So Flipside in a great position. They just have to keep the composure, keep the discipline, keep the focus going forwards now, and they can do this one and force it to a third map, but it's, it's definitely easier said than done. One of the... Uh changes to the garage area is Mark lost position. He has a bit more work, a bit more area to work with there. A bit more shield while being at the front of the garage position. He can go for some shoulder peeks towards the uh, silo, for example, presuming that nobody's up on the catwalk, which goes all the way around now. All the way around. Let's have a look and see where the T's are setting up. They're going for the wall of smokes, it seems, outside once again. But Taco, where is this smoke headed? Seems that they might be trying to fake Ramp? I don't know. We will find out soon enough, though, as the smoke streams in towards Ramp, and Cold Zero is about to let go of his one outside as well. Fallen Fur, Cold, outside. Let's see if uh, these CTs can be pulled towards the Ramp. Yeah, so it's going to be now the outside push that is commencing for SK Gaming. Smoke's all over the place. I love how they have the outer catwalk smoke as well. That's very important to place that there, as they only have to worry about one level at a time. And it's a slow approach here for SK, but they have made their way down and they will meet Blade soon. The smoke has been put down by Blade to slow them down, but they can't be slowed down. They have to go through it. There's not much time as Blade tries to post the defense, but he gets completely shut down and shut out by Fur as well. And it tries to get some damage done with the pistol there, but he can't get anything done really. And it's going to be just Waylander who responds in the vent area. A very important position to deny from SK Gaming. They now have 15 seconds to plant. Fur with the flying frag onto Markolov. Is this enough to get the bomb down? Looks like he'll be but Wayland is straight back in there with another one, and things get very chaotic here. Two versus two. Well, they're stuck behind him. They're going to change places so Wayland can hold the angle, but he's going to get taken down from below by Fur. That is a disaster, and this is going to be a really hard clutch for Waylander. Trying not to get traded here, opting to pick up the up, but what's he going to do with it? He has some time, he's got a kit, but uh, he does not have many options, and it seems that he is going to abandon in this situation. SK slowly drag themselves to round number 14. Flipside doing a lot to stop them there. And that's really interesting because when you saw that smoke execute from SK come out, I think they're messing up some of their smokes. Again, this is a map that they haven't played too much. We saw one smoke on main roof, which I really don't think is necessarily uh, a deliberate smoke. I don't know, because there, there were a lot of uh, gaps on the floor around the entrance to main. So they were exposed to a great many places. So I can't imagine that was on purpose. Either way, two round lead here for SK. They have a pause coming in from Fallen, so maybe it's a, it's a technical one. The money's all over the place here for Flipside, but they will be able to get the buyback outs. Yeah, it also could be a tactical one as well. I mean, I think he was at SK in the, in the last major, they used the timeout when basically they were in a position where they pretty much won the game. Or it might not have been SK, it might, it might have been another team, but definitely uh, there is a lot for them to consider here as well because they, they know right now that there's only one more buy for Flipside. And if they're able to win this round, they basically won this best of three. That is, that's how, that's, that's the gravity of the situation that they are dealing with and also that Flipside are dealing with right now. But also they do give Flipside a bit of an opportunity to calm down as well. So it kind of works both ways to some extent. Yeah, so it's, it is indeed the tactical pause from SK Gaming. Interesting, they've chosen to do that at this timing. 14 to 12. SK close to taking this, but it's been uh, mostly a CT game for the most part, and the clock has been the enemy of the T side. Again, Blade putting in great work with this shotgun a bit earlier on. Flip side mounting a good comeback. Again, they had half the score of SK a little bit earlier on, but now they bring themselves within two rounds of their opponents who lead the Brazilians to by one game to zero. Yeah, and it would be so good to see another map out of flip side. I, I really want to see that, to be honest. And. Uh, so far, they're showing that they can they can perform to a level that uh, means that they are very dangerous to SK. And already, it was a massive upset that they, the flip side were able to take down NIP uh, just yesterday. And uh, they're proving their, their their metal in this situation. They have, they really deserve this spot. And right now, it's uh, for SK Gaming. I'm I'm quite curious as to you know what they're going to go for. We're seeing a lot of those those uh, slow defaults into the outside wall of smokes and I mean you alluded to it at, uh, towards the beginning of the series it's one of those situations where you can cause a lot of misinformation 
and the, uh, well, you can obscure information as well for the CTs. When you just put those two smokes down, they just never quite know, and it's never quite safe for them to go and confirm the, the information either. So it's always going to be a guessing game. We've seen SK use that to push behind uh, through the smoke and also to go towards the other direction. So that has been a default that they've gone with quite often. But uh, the resume has come in. The timeout is uh, timed in, and we will be kicking off with this again very, very soon. Right then, let's see which of these teams can take this map over the line. Two round lead for SK, Taco down to a Tech 9. Flip side, gonna have World of it on the AWP once again. So perhaps we'll see a fast round from SK. Do they have a fast round in their repertoire on you? We will maybe, maybe not find that one out as well. Taco moving through towards the ramp area with a Molotov. Just to stop any shenanigans from the CT side. Blade playing on the site in A for the time being. Uh, moving towards the outside once again. Deep smoke from the CTs to try and slow down the advance of SK outside. Got Fallen, who was on the high ground a bit earlier on, but has now moved elsewhere. So everything's slowing down. People will wait for smokes to disappear. And then they will consider their options. Again, we have SK looking to line things up outside, looking to execute that wall of smoke or some kind of variation on it. I don't think it's like a complete wall that we were seeing from flip side. The smokes fly out once again, but Astana Dragon style, it seems to be a lie. Yeah, and again, we're getting all the, uh, the smokes in the right places. Well, this time, I think we're getting the smokes in the right places. There's a bit, of a, a bit of a gap there. It could be maybe a little bit more perfect, but either way, SK Gaming, you know, once again, this is what we are talking about previously. Flip side, they just don't know what's happening behind those smokes. It could be an entire team pushing secret, or they couldn't be. And uh, right now, we're going to see all the numbers towards this uh, ramp area, and Shara's day is going to get the first frag. Well, it will peek and find himself one. The flick is going to come in, but it's just going to be the leg there onto Fur, and Fallen is going to claim the revenge kill onto Shara, and Blade will go down as well on the upper side so things are looking pretty interesting here but definitely in favor of flip side fur is going out on a limb to see if he can save this but he is going to be found from an unknown angle thanks to world edit and now it's just 10 hp for fnx and markloff knows where he is as well fnx was running back and forth around the ramp area and markloff was just sitting in hell just waiting for him to show his face He's moving up to heaven now, and FNX is going outside, but there are 10 seconds left here. So again, it's a desperate situation, and time will be the winner once again. This is the third timeout of the half, and there was one in the previous map as well. Okay, so this, is, this actually gets really interesting now, because, because SK Gaming had no money, they bought, now they just need full reset. And look how many rounds we're at, we're already pretty much at the end. There is a real possibility right now for Flipside to win this one. They've put themselves in that position. Of course, they have to claim the remaining rounds, but they're going to go into the next two rounds with the, the weaponry advantage for the next two rounds, which, will bring them to the, which should bring them to 15 if they're able to claim those two rounds, but they have that natural advantage. All they have to do is not lose against pistol shakes. That's, what, that's all they have to do, yeah. right? You make it sound so simple, Dan. Well, let's see what the T's have in store. FNX still has the AK from the previous round. He's moving over towards the ramp. He's looking for a fast play here. He's looking for a one versus one. Shara throwing Nader. He is going to get that, that frag. So that is the AK taken away from SK Gaming. Taco trying to do what he can. Manages to pick it up, actually, with the Deagle. He's getting tagged, just about escaping with the gun for now. First time to close the distance up top. But uh, he's going to be flying around. It is Bedlam here on this map. Jumping straight back up again. Making lots of noise. Nice little bunny hopping there. And yeah, with that uh, fast movement speed on the Tech 9, it, it could actually be a bit of a problem if they don't kill him immediately, if he peeks in towards Waylander's position. But looks like Blaze going to fit out the numbers, and Waylander already knows what's going on. So he will easily dispatch for sending him flying down the, uh, from the Heaven area. And it's just Taco with 20 HP. So this looks like it's good for Flipside. In fact, not only just good, they're, actually, they, they're looking like they're going to survive with four players here. Unless Taco can do something untoward, then they should be uh, good in that, for that scenario. And uh, we'll have to see how things uh, pan off on the money for SK Gaming. I don't think they're going to have very much, no. Some of the players will have around $4,000 and some below. So it's, if they decide to buy, it's going to be very, very bad. It's going to be a very bad buy, generally speaking. They won't, a bad decision. They won't have many grenades either, so, so yeah. If they buy now, it's a gamble. Well, look at that. Straight in for the big green gun, no Kevlar. Fallen wants no business playing for overtime. Yeah. The big question is, how many smokes are they going to get? Fur has a decision to make. What kind of weaponry is he going to buy? He's one of the key smokers outside when they go for that wall of smoke, and indeed, he's going to pick one up as well. So that gives you an inkling as to what we can expect in the early stages of this round here from SK. 
Again, they went for a bit of a fake last time where they moved towards the lobby of the Throne of Smoke. So what will they do on this occasion? How is Fallen going to get himself in position with no Kevlar? He's up high as per usual. This is standard here from what we've seen on the T rounds so far. Yeah, he's so instrumental with that orb, to be honest. And I wonder if this side will realize or how quickly it'll take them to realize. And he might just have an opportunity here. And it looks like uh, Markov realizes he's in a bit of trouble with that uh, nade potentially to uh, keep himself in, uh, in a position where he can actually escape alive. And he will. He's got help from World Edit there. So good team play, but uh, it costs them in the way of utility to get out of that situation. And as I said, SK Gaming losing some health on some players as well. Markov's got a HE. Markolov has the HE and he is outside, so is Fallen. That is a problem. HE can do around 80 damage if it gets close enough. Fallen's got 59. That could be a problem if Markolov chooses to throw it and throws it in the right place. For the meantime, he's uh, sorry, for the time being, he is just waiting, biding his time. Maybe one of his teammates has an angle. He can stop a rotation coming in. Got an off angle in case somebody's on catwalk as well. The thing is, SK only have two smokes and two flashbangs right now, so they have to get so much done with just the raw aim battles. The raw, the raw one versus ones, those uh, clean, crisp shots is what they need to win this round. And Markov now is starting to ask some questions outside because there's 30 seconds left and they're still not sure exactly what SK Gaming want, but it seems like Blade has worked it out to some extent as the rotation is, is beginning to come in and the action is starting to happen there as we get the entry frag from Cole onto Waylander. FNX finds Blade and all of a sudden it's down to World Edit and Markov. This is a disastrous situation. World Edit cannot afford to be missing these shots. And all of a sudden SK Gaming have a bomb down and Fur takes down World Edit. What on earth just happened to Flipside? This is daylight robbery, Dan. No witnesses. Apart from one, Markolov, and he is running away looking for witness protection, but he may not be protected that. 15 to 14, a very unlikely round. No Kevlar for Fallen. They don't lose a single player. They were down and out. They didn't have utility. They were skimping on all kinds of things, and they don't lose a single player. A perfect round coming in from SK to move them to game and match point versus Flipside. Yeah, Flipside still have a chance, obviously, because they'll, they'll have a buy, like a decent buy in this next round. But the thing is, really, is that they had a position where they should have, they had a very strong chance to win this map. And now, now they're, they're playing essentially a, a sort of an even chance to actually get, just get to overtime. And SK Gaming have already had so much, uh, they've had so much data finding from, from all the, uh, all the rounds that have already been played, that going into the overtime, I, I can't help but feel like SK would be a little bit favoured. So we're going to see the auto shotgun coming out onto Blade. Other than that, other than that though, it looks pretty decent for the rest of the players for flip side. So they are going to be fighting with something. But double orbs back in for SK Gaming, Cold and Fallen. Yeah, auto shotgun's okay as long as you use it on the A site. Fallen going for a fast peek towards ramp, but he will be denied by smoke. So time will be wasted. Waylander on the high ground for the time being inside the A side. You can see Fur creeping outside. So things changing here from SK. The Brazilians with advanced positions without going for those nades. They're not going to telegraph their intentions here. Well, they're holding an angle towards red, but uh, he may have to go back and check the silo position on his own as well. Moving into the peak spot may be a bit of, a bit of an issue for him. Squeaky's been blown off as well. Lots of problems and places to defend here for Flipside. So Taco is looking to get that uh, first entry frame. The smoke goes down. Will he push past it? Yes, he will. And he gets the entry. Shara is dead. And now Taco has claimed so much space for his teammates. Fallen's going to be getting himself in there as well. The one's still down for SK. So at the moment, a minute left, you know, they should be looking to collect that and start to really work with the space that they have. And you can see that Fallen's looking for a response here, a reaction. He might get one as well because Flipside will feel pressured to try to equalize somehow. Markov's the one on the angle. He knows there'll be multiple players jumping down. Great use of grenades there to deny Markov even a chance to get a frag as they jump down. And it's going to be played in with a shotgun to take a quick frag, but that's going to be it. He's now dead. And a series of trades here, but SK should be able to get, able to get the plant. Well, then it was out of position, couldn't really help his teammates. Taken down Fur in the meantime, brought it back to a two versus two. And again, we're in a situation where the bomb needs to get planted. Look at Waylander's position, there's a hole in the glass as well. He can move into the site, stop the plant from coming in. The spray down is real, 14 seconds left. And Stacco has to go for the plant here. Not gonna do it, we're going to overtime. A big place there from Waylander to save the day. Oh, what a desperate match in certain situations. It really felt like fifth side could have, uh, could have actually taken this one. But again, overtime, SK, I really like their chances moving into this overtime because they have shown, I think, generally, like a, a, across the board, much better individual performances and uh, also a, a lot of versatility. And 
I mean, you've got a guy like Fallen who's, who's uh, he's able to look back on all these rounds with the, with the coach, Zeus, and I think it's going to be tough. But the mind games between Fallen and Blade will be the, in, the most interesting part, I think, of the overtime. Yeah, there's a good average of kills on the Brazilian side. Not bad on Flipside's team either. You have to wonder who the momentum favours at the moment. It seems Flipside was struggling a bit towards the end there. But, I mean, they were playing catch-up for the longest time. So to get to 15 to 15 is an achievement in itself. We will see soon enough if they can take it over the line in overtime. It seems there's some bickering there between two different fans from either side. I know that guy. <laughs> He's from London, so shout out to him coming all the way here. So, flip side versus SK 15 to 15. Daniel favoring SK, it could go either way. Flip side, do they have the temerity, the strength to bring this to 1 1? We will find out after the break. Fifteen to fifteen, flip side holding on by a thread, and now they have new, fresh opportunity to take this to a third map versus SK. It will continue here on the T side. It's hard to say how it's going to go, but one thing that's going to be very cool is that already we've seen that both teams have their defaults. They understand how to play various situations on a map that hasn't seen much play. So that level of preparation and then with the kind of cerebral aspect of Blade and Fallen, that makes it quite exciting. And we'll see SK Gaming continuing on the T side right now and already actually going with a faster pace than we're used to in regulation time, just pushing outside very quickly indeed, forcing out some grenades in defense from the flip side defense and Markov is, is waiting to see what's going on there but it seems like those initial counter grenades will stop Fallen and Co for the time being but for how long? Indeed both teams being uh, much more active here well did it holding down angles towards the ramp position Fallen creeping outside Waylander just biding his time inside the A bomb site gonna be watching paint dry for the time being Shara's over towards Hell, so things are changed up a little bit here for the CT side. Again, we've got another a default execute here from SK, the double Molotovs coming in towards that box. Used to be much more useful to jump onto the roof now, but uh, that roller shutter does make you slide off these days. Fallen out, creeping into a dodgy position here. Markov will not know that there's an enemy on the other side at the moment. Shara trying to get a frag there, but he can leave that one to Markov, and indeed Markov will make it pay. It's only to try to creep forwards now, but so far it's good work from Flipside to deny them. And they're really wasting a lot of time as well as getting the frags that they need to get. The foe will finally trade one back onto Mark Law. So they lost their outside man, and SK Gaming do need to make something happen because otherwise we are going to see that trend kind of popping in again. Well, they will leave, them, leave themselves without opportunity, but Fur able to make the opening required as Blade springs forth from the vent area. And we get a couple kills going towards flip side right now. Wayland is trying to hold it down. He gets two players almost taking down both, leaving it down to World at it. But he can't oh. miss the shot. He throws away his orb. And around that should have been flip sides. Around where SK Gaming did not have time seems to be thrown away by flip side. Well, that it had a gaping hole to shoot through. That was the window. He had the enemies back to him as well and didn't manage to hit the shot, Dan. That 
was a disaster. That was a choke, if ever I have seen one. And that's a very expensive one for Flipside as well. Double orbs for the SK team, and we see well that it manages to get back on the orb. But if Flipside lose this round, they're going to have no money left for the last round. This is a critical situation for Flipside. And it's funny to see how much SK are willing to invest the double orbs. Well, if you're going to invest a lot and it pays off like that, then it's always going to be a worthwhile fall. And it's not done just yet, though, continuing to push into Boulder and Boulder Angles, finding another kill onto Blade. And hope is slowly diminishing now as Flipside are wondering what the hell they can possibly do with just two players against five. With a minute and a half left, this is truly going to be Fallen's stomping ground. He can make any kind of a call, and Shara gets caught between two players. And that is just not how you will get this done. Fallen's the only man who took damage in that round from SK, and he didn't get killed. That was a solid second round. And now let's have a look at the money for oh Flipside. They've got around $2,000, Dan. This is not even a jumble sale buy. I don't even know what to describe this one as. It just sucks. So, I mean, Flipside, it's going to be hard for them to just sit, sit by and just wait as well, because SK Gaming have actually shown previously that they've got some nice anti-ecos. They understand where to throw a lot of the Molotovs to get in towards a bomb site somewhat safely. We will even have a taser coming in from Waylanders. So, as so long as SK play, you know, the anti-ecos that we've been seeing, or anti-force players we've been seeing, they should be fine to win this round and claim the first three in this overtime. What a fast overtime it's been so far as well. Explosive stuff from the Brazilians. What can Flipside even do in this situation? How do you be aggressive on the CT side when you have one rifle and four pistols? How do you take an early advantage when there's a catwalk all the way round into heaven? Well, well James. Markolov, again, using that uh, extra piece of garage that gives you a bit more cover. He will get taken down eventually. Waylander going in for a desperate taze attempt now. Fallen's gonna, not going to be able to uh, get taken down by that. He refuses. But now Fallen's in an awkward position. We've got Molotovs flying all over the place, and Waylander's going to get taken down. Desperate measures, desperate times here for Flipside. Man disadvantage at the moment. And just the one rifle on Tashara. And now, SK, they've called the final push. We're going to take everybody through ramp. And there is the rifle. Shara picks up the first kill there, falls back down. There is opportunity here for him to do something. He needs a star performance in this round to do more work. And he's going to find it as well. The headshot coming in from Shara, repositioning. Now things are starting to get really painful for SK Gaming because they don't really have enough players. So Cole is going to back away there. Shara doesn't need to get aggressive. And it looks like he won't, which is very smart. It's allowing SK to sit in their despair a little bit longer as they're sort of forced to go towards the upper side at this point. Too afraid of Shara and they'll make their way up heaven down onto the bomb site. Ooh, Cold actually missing the initial chance there for the shot, but we'll get the tag eventually anyway. Two versus three against the pistols. And the M4 of Shara, he's got two kills already. He's coming in from the main position. Flashes, but they won't do much to FNX at the very least. Looking through the gap now, takes on Wilder at two versus two. He's going to get taken down by Shara. There is no kit onto this CT. He's cold zero, can waste some time here. He's got to take nine as well. Shara coming in for the high ground, trying to cover the angle for his teammate. Is the defuse coming in here from Blade? It is. There are three seconds left. Cold, can he do it? Just in time. There was one second on the clock there, but he will not let him have anything. In the words of Vince McMahon, life sucks and then you die. So now fifth side in an awful position where they have to, I mean, they can't lose a single round into the second half. This really truly has SK Gaming written all over it right now, shutting down the chances of a possibility for a third map for flip side to try to just clamber back on train, which could, I mean, that could be very possible for them despite SK Gaming being obviously a fantastic train team, but at least another chance it would be. But perhaps it is not to be right now. Stress for the flip side team. They have no rounds on their defensive half, which means of quite obviously SK only require one. They took a gamble with those ops. You saw the gamble from Virtus Pro in overtime on the previous match. They came in with those AWPs. When that doesn't work for you in overtime, in your last round, if you, if you lose the first two, there's just no money left. It's a calculated risk. They took it, didn't pay off for them, and they ended up in extreme poverty. They ended up on the street stand with one sock, not even two. They've got one minute 50 to consider their options here. You can see a very jovial SK. No pressure on them. They're a game ahead. They've got three match points. Everything's going in their way, going in their favor right now. Yeah, I mean, when we first got cut to the, the shot of the SK boys, it did actually look like they almost had that air of, yeah, we've already won this. But of course, you can, in, in a game of Counter-Strike, you can never feel that way. So, you know, I imagine they've experienced to uh, just 
put 100% focus into just closing this one, moving on to those semifinals. But we'll have to see if Flipside can come up with something. At the very least, I mean, the one thing that does actually help them in this situation is they do actually at least get to play the T side, which means that they can dictate the pace a little bit more. You know, with SK Gaming being able to play the T side and they're you know, running around with double orbs and so on and so forth, it can be quite chaotic. Just being reactive to that is a bit painful. And we did see that the best chance in the regulation time was that for Flipside to have a strong half was their T side. So there is definitely a glimmer of hope, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel potentially for Flipside, but they need to make sure that they can maintain their composure because as, as you mentioned, well did it was, has been, has been not just in that one situation, but previous to that as well, be missing some shots he normally always hits. And that cannot be the case if they want to win this match. Really, that shot through hut window that he missed was a monstrous choke and that may cost him dearly. The funny thing is, he is top fragging on the server, as well as Waylander. Both of them are leading in the frags. Fur is just behind them, but they're just not getting the crucial rounds here, at least not in overtime. They, but let's not forget, they have done well to recover to this point in the first place, but now they need three from three on their T side, and that may prove difficult. We've seen many rounds from both teams where they struggled with the time, they struggled to figure out what the CTs were doing. They can't afford for that to happen right now. Oh, absolutely, and uh, both teams have been playing generally a slower start, which is why it was so interesting to see SK Gaming at the beginning of their T side of overtime. They ramped up the pace significantly, just in, in the, both of those two very important rounds. Uh, we saw them just moving so quickly compared to usually just waiting for all the smokes. And instead, you know, they were in a situation where they said, okay, we're not going to wait for the smokes. We're going to force the action. We're going to force you to throw the smokes in, in spots where you don't necessarily want to to slow us down. And then we're going to push through those. So here it is. It's going to be all beginning now as we have Flipside who have had a bunch of time to collect themselves and to think of options. Let's see what they choose. Waylander moving outside. One op onto the T side. Two ops onto SK. Seems like two ops on both sides of this map. Again, no margin for error here from Flipside. They need three rounds from three. Otherwise, they are out of this tournament. But well, they're holding angles with the AWP. Cold Zero is playing outside at the moment in a position where we previously saw him with the M4 around the side of the garage itself, falling over towards the ramp area in an elevated position. So if well, that it tries to go for a bit of a fast crouch peak and he's a bit faster than Fallen, Fallen's more likely to get legged, in which case he will survive and he can get the fatal frag onto his opponent. So the tension builds as we have silence for the first 45 seconds of the round or so. Flip side now should be beginning to make a move and Fallen is waiting for that. He's counting on it. And Shara is on the angle, and uh, you would expect them to throw in, some, throw in some nades to the Nightfall, and they should expect him to be in that position, as they saw him there very frequently in regulation. But it looks like Flipside actually going to go towards upper. They haven't done this too often, or will it be a fake? There's a lot for Flipside to work with in this situation, but time is not one of those things, as they've only got 30 seconds left, and they're starting to make the move in, but FNX is there outside the door, and there's so many targets to choose between, and it will be Fallen with the pistol to trade back, but there's a real chance here for Flipside as they get the bomb down. Taco's coming in for a flag, but is he going to get there fast enough? Maybe. Cold Zero gets traded towards the main area. Now Taco alone coming in from the back, and neither person seems to be prepared for him. Well, they're completely out of position here, leaving Markolov alone. Markolov, the legend for his team. The man going for 1.6 to go. Can he keep his team in the game here? Taco sees the bomb, has no idea where Markolov is. He could be in the high ground. He could be over towards that lobby position. Taco has to go for the defuse, looking for the fake. He's got a little bit of time here, but Markolov is still going slowly, quietly. He needs to hide, he needs to just stay alive here, Markolov. He should be able to do this for his team. Taco's not going to get the frag. Flipside survive for now. Flipside survive for now. And it was done in the chaos, in the anarchy of that set piece, that push into the upper bomb side. And again, that was something that we did not really see in uh, regulation time too much uh, from either side. So it's, it's cool that both teams have a rounds to go to that they already didn't show each other too much of. So I wonder if we'll see more like that. And it is often, often very gambly to kind of go for rushes like that because, you know, where the headshots fall is hard, often hard to predict. And uh, 
But actually, guess Kigami don't have any grenades to work with this time. Well, we have a similar story. If we see the money they have left or the lack of, you can see Fallen's got zero in the bank and this is it. Aggression. He needs an early pick for his team. If they lose this round, SK, they're going to be in the exact same situation. Flip side, we're in the first half. And that means we are likely to go into overtime too. Fallen continuing to push now. Looking for someone to take down. And uh, I think he might be being engaged over there. He's continuing to push now, and now he's going to be exposed to multiple places. So maybe he's overextending here because we've got passive positions being held by the T's. If they start to move in, then Fallen could get taken down for free. Execute coming in, well did it, and Blade again, just holding passively. When when you have a, a CT side on a force buy or an eco, then you'll often hold where, where Blade is holding. So if they push, you can retreat and abandon the lobby. Speaking of which, SK moving back to the ramp now. Yeah, that was really crazy how much uh, space they were constricting, SK Gaming that is. But finally they've given up the ghost there, they've given it back to Flipside, and Flipside looking like they might just go for that upper play again, and this time they have a man advantage from the get-go. So this should be quite successful if everything's to go to plan, but they're going for the vent drop with at least one player, and that's going to be a frag for Waylander. Now it's absolute chaos here for the CT side of SK Gaming, just Taco and Cold Zero against four players, four assailants from Flipside. 30 seconds to get the bomb planted, and Cold is starting to creep in with the FAMAS. As he hears the bomb tick away, looking for the first engagement there through the doors, but he can't spot anybody. It's going to be Taco instead, who dies in the vent, leaving everything to be done by full, uh, by Cold. And he's going to drop Waylander straight away. Another engagement found, but he cannot defeat Blade. Flipside, hang on, just one more. They've got no money. SK have got no money. They were struggling in the last round. You saw how far Fallen pushed into T territory, but Flipside gave him nothing. He got nothing, and now he still has almost nothing. We've got the auto shotgun coming out onto Fur. Pistol for Taco. This buy is as abysmal as it was for Flipside in the last round of the previous half. But can Flipside take it over the line here? SK down but not out, and maybe they're a better team to try and win with this kind of rubbish buy. Yeah, it's something we've seen a lot in the past, so can never count it out. And they have found a lot of quite uh, awesome ways to get aggressive, have SK Gaming in previous spots, but the thing is is that they're less incentivized to go for aggression in a spot like this because it's more expected from Flipside, and Flipside have built into the structure of the early round an expectation for that aggression and positions that could deal with those sorts of plays. So SK Gaming, they're left in a spot where they just sort of have to wait for a little bit before they get aggressive, and that's what's happening. But equally, you know, flip side themselves, after a while, they're going to start to think, all right, we need to get some, some uh, control of the map here. And uh, that's what they're going to start to work on as we reach one minute left in this round. Is this an execute into the A site? They could even go for a split towards main. Let's have a look. So it seems that smoke might be deliberate, actually, on the roof of uh, main. So let's have a look. Oh, they, they were lining up as well. That could have been worse. Fallen, they're serving themselves up to him for some reason. Man, disadvantage. And again, SK don't really have the weaponry here. Flipside can't wait too long. There are 40 seconds left, and this is where we start to get worried. Nobody checking main. The bomb's down as well. Not like this, Flipside, please. Three versus four. SK, the man advantage. That clock is continuing to tick here. Big problems for, for Flipside. And Markle's lurking, he's about to make his way forwards there through onto the hut. The bomb is being carried down to the lower sites. So they're switching up the plan at the moment now as Blade will get himself in position to try to make sure the bomb can go down. Taco just thinking his teammate there just for a moment as he will start to find Blade. A headshot is going to be for Epinex. Markov goes down to Fallen and Shara! He cannot plant the bomb! A semi-finals for SK as Flipside got so close but they could, have, could not take it over the line against one of the best teams in the world. Flipside full short when they had the best chance to win SC any round in that entire overtime. They was nothing on the SK side. Did they overplay it? Did they overthink it? What a brutal way to lose. That is the worst way to lose. The worst thing is that they, were, they will realize that they had a very legitimate chance at taking SK to three maps and maybe even defeating them. That, that was on the cards. They showed that they, they had the potential to do that, but they will fall. And uh, there's no shame in that, but for them, I mean, we never expected Flipside to even get this far. Yeah, they did take SK to the limits on Nuke, and it was a great Nuke to see again, a new map. And uh, both teams showed us a lot, especially SK on their CT sides and how they varied it. Very strong stuff from them and lots for other teams to observe. Looks like a good pick for Flipside. They had the history with that team and Blades.
but he couldn't take it over the line. Paul's on the stage with one of the Luminosity players for an interview. Thanks very much, yes, uh, with Gabriel. Um, Fallen, fantastic result for you, another semi-final confirmed, but was that a little bit harder than maybe you expected it to be? Yeah, definitely. They're a super good team. They're a very strategic team. They're based, they play super slow, and it's still a new map for us. I think it's a new map for everybody, so there's a lot to learn, and we're sure we're going to be improving every time we play Nuke. Was there, was there a, a reason that you thought it would be good to allow Nuke to go through and maybe end up getting some practice or experience on it? Yeah, we have been practicing Nuke. It's one of our maps on our map pools. It definitely it's not our stronger map because it's just so new. But we need to play it sometimes. I mean, it's, I, I think it's what well smart from Flipside to pick it because they knew they would have a better chance. So I respect their pick. Okay, in terms of looking forward, semi finals, yet another match. You've looked flawless so far in this tournament. Is there any weak areas that you guys are going to be thinking about overnight that you want to work on? No, no. Yeah, each step, each time. Uh, if we didn't lose any map till now, it doesn't mean anything. Next time we need to beat, I think it's Roots Pro next semi final. It's going to be awesome. Last major we had to play then as well. And we're just going to try to play our best game, do some preparation to play then, and be ready for tomorrow. Yeah, in terms of playing Virtus Pro next up, they're, they're always a gritty side, aren't they? They're always they're grind out results if they're not playing very well, but they're playing very well here. So is there, is there an element, not of fear, but you're not going to be surprised by them this time, are you? Yeah, they're su they're, they are super good players. They have a great history. They're legends in Counter-Strike. So Virtus Pro is a team that you should always respect and be, be worried about because they're super good. They have the talent. So, last major, they, they impressed it as well. Ma ma a lot of people were not considering then, but there was a super difficult match, one to one. So, I expect to do the same this time. Yeah. You impressed the family out there? You want any words for them? Yeah, of course. Tamo junto, galera. Valeu, família. Amo vocês. Well done. Good luck in the semi final. Thank you. <laughs> Fallen there, but the story will start and um, this time end for Flipside as they do again. This time, admittedly, it's not in groups, but again, pushed some of the best teams in the world to very close score lines. Even Mirage, admittedly, wasn't, you know, the closest affair, but still, they are staying competitive. It is this story that Flipside keep on telling us. This time, of course, retaining legendary status, which we saw just how happy Markalov was about. Unable to do much more about that, but Markalov's probably a good place to start this discussion. Uh, there was a lot of references to the Markalov of old, Duncan. Uh, did we see a little glimmer of it today? Yeah, I think over the series, he was probably the best player for them. Yeah, I mean, he was the only real guy on Mirage who was getting anything done. They had, actually, the ingredients to win on, on Nuke here, just in terms of individual performance. The three that you pick out is obviously Markov, World Edit, and Waylander. All three, for most of the game, were coming through, and I think that's actually one of the main reasons why they were able to get so many rounds and make it a very competitive game. So, they, that was the first ingredient. Unfortunately, I mean, it, it was always a risk picking Nuke for yourself yeah. as much as the enemy because you yourself haven't got the battle routine and who knows what you do when you're in a 12-12 scenario and you want to grind a round out. You don't really know, they don't know. So I think they were willing to gamble in that sense. It worked for them sometimes, didn't work overall. I think the better team won. Yanko, did you identify any trends? Uh, we got to see Nuke in play for the first time in this major. Was there any particular trends, especially on that attacking side to address? To me, it seemed as business, business as usual when it comes to the old version of Nuke as well. We saw a lot of... Uh, splits with a secret uh, area and ram going yeah. towards that lower bomb site in regulation we didn't really see a single execute towards the upper bomb site the only thing we saw was the that strat that flip side had that they used in overtime as well where they throw the molly on top of the hut and then uh, smoke off the area outside of the vents and jump down to the lower bomb site yet again so pretty much uh, teams haven't really been innovative on this map uh, so far. It's what you're expecting then, Lauren. It's the same old. Yeah, and I, I've also got to say as well, looking at the CT side coming out from flip side in more specifics, I guess, to a smaller degree is, you know, we highlighted the good points for them, or at least Thorin did from there, that there were standout players, but then there has to be a negative side. For me, it was Shara who dropped some incredibly important rounds. He was giving away, <clears throat> excuse me, very early frags in that, and it was in the rounds that they could have possibly gone to build from it. And I actually quite like the way Markov played off those rounds, quite passive to the outside area. They did adapt a little bit, nowhere near as active as the others when they played for the kind of like AWP duels. They occasionally had, you know, a couple coming out, you know, whether it World Edit or Waylander playing off the back of ramp. Really nicely done, but as said, it just wasn't enough to grind out in the end for me. In stark contrast, okay, Shara threw away a couple of those important rounds, Fallen secured a couple of them. There's one in particular, that one versus two, Yanko. It did look like there was a couple of mistakes made on Flipside's part, but still incredible orping from Fallen. Yeah, th that was pretty surprising to me how they, how they played that 2v1, because there was not a lot of time left uh, on the clock. They should have just played it safe. 
Uh, it was uh, Markelov and Whirl at it for left. First Whirl at it lingering around the stairs area. And then Markelov, I think this was miscommunication on flip side's part because he could, he had time to move to the other side of the door. And then he could have just tried to bait a shot out of Fallen, just play the time, probably would have secured the round. But he's stuck on that right side. Fallen gets uh, uh, the peak and, and gets the defuse. And we saw that the, the, the game went to overtime. If that clutch went flip side's way, maybe they could have won it in regulation. It'd be intrigued to talk a little bit about, uh, about Taco as an individual. We always find ourselves drawn to Fallen, even fur after that video. Does he fall into that same category as, you know, ne not often in the limelight? He was criticized during, well, not too long ago, actually, within this roster, Duncan. Has he grown as a player as of late? Yeah, because actually when, it, when they first put this lineup together, the lineup was immediately good. I mean, they yeah. made the finals of the first tournament they were in. They were making, in general, top four finals at most tournaments they were in. But actually, when you looked at the stats, Everyone else either had fantastic starts or pretty good stats, and he was the one guy where he was always in the minuses and it was yeah. below par for what a pro-level pro player should be getting. But first of all, he actually improved his individual skills, certainly, like he actually, at Katowice, had a pretty good tournament where they made all the way to the final there. I think what you've learned about him is, he's a, it's the sort of scenario where, okay, there could be times when he has a good map statistically, but actually that's probably not ideal for the team. Like, it's probably better if everyone else is on fire. He's playing his role, he's feeding into them, and it's like I always say, there's only so many resources on the map, both for your team and the opponents. So if, if you can get like your superstars going and you can put them in positions where they're going to succeed, that's your job. And so if you win the championship, no one's really going to criticize you at that point. And we all know a team of all-stars doesn't necessarily work. FaZe are evidence of that. Lauren, you, do you have something to add to that? I think it was just proof and um, oh. point um, in the fact of how Taco was playing towards Ramp on the T side specifically. He would kind of almost throw himself into the blender, but when he didn't, you'd see players like Weld at it, shutting them all down. It was a massive display of dominance. So again, I think Thorin's point just gets highlighted throughout that T side specifically for mm. Taco there. Now, it feels weird to say, but does the 2-0 tell the whole story? We came to this... Very much expecting SK to 2-0 uh, flip side tactics, but we do want to just quickly reflect on what we're taking away from this. It's quarterfinal on the big stage. You know, what are we learning from this battle between SK and flip side, Duncan? What have we learned? Well, I mean, for one thing, one thing that actually doesn't surprise me in a historical context is that Markov actually had his really good game here when, as I said before, like, actually he had a lot of underwhelming games in flip side recently. Yeah. And he was often the X factor in a negative sense. Like he wouldn't turn up and that's why they wouldn't really have a chance. The thing about Markov, he's going back in a 1.6. He wasn't just a star player, but he was always very famed for actually the big gameplay. You know, if you put him on a stage and it's a big match, that's when it brings the best out of him. So I think he had a very good performance. I think Blade as an in-game leader is obviously going to get a lot of the credit for this team, making it so much further than expectations, yeah. beating NIP, getting a, almost a map win here against the best team in the world. I think actually it plays to both sides though, because for flip side, obviously fantastic to do this crazy pick, almost win on it. But at the same time, you have to also admire SK that the, probably the one map they didn't expect to come out, comes out, the, the other team has something on it, they're getting, getting going and they still managed to win and grind it out on the T side, which is classic SK gaming. What about you, Yanko? Is there anything to add to that? Like, I mean, getting so close to a team like flip side, does that make us worry about this versus pro SK matchup coming up tomorrow for them? Uh, not really. I think, if anything, it shows the strength of the SK lineup that even, as Duncan pointed out, on a map that they aren't really prepared on. Certainly, I don't think they expected for Flipside to, to pick it here. They show that they have what it takes to, to you know, compose themselves at, and to grind those rounds out, rounds out in the end. And with all of that said and done, we do wave goodbye to Flipside. They are added to the pile. I'm allowed to. It's a new day. Okay. The uh, pile of eliminated teams. And we do see another team secure their spot. Now it's Virtus Pro and SK locked in for tomorrow's semi-final. We move now to the other half of the bracket. We're going to be taking a break, but when we do come back, we get to see the only remaining North American presence, Liquid, go up against the scary CIS Beasts Navi. If you want a preview of this match, you want to get the stats of this one we just witnessed, you want to see just how well Markolov was playing and all of that good stuff, you can do so through the app called The Score Esports. It's available on iOS and Google Play. And alongside all of that, you can even get those preview articles for other uh, esports alongside your Dotas, which have majors of their own. For now, though, we take a break. When we do come back, we're going to get to see a little bit of what Liquid are capable of, and I'll be discussing it with these handsome people to my left. See you soon.